Hey guys, I am really happy to see all of you here. My name is Leander Joseph and I will be teaching you all the basics of HTML today in this web development program. Before we dive in, I would like to share with you the history of HTML and what HTML was and what's it, what it's become now. So, as you can see the image displayed on the screen, HTML is basically the skeletal structure of a web page. And then when we use CSS along with HTML, we can add on some designs and make our HTML website look much neat and much more pretty. And when we use HTML, CSS and JavaScript, which we will be learning in this next uh, three days, we can make our web page, like, you know, undestructible and it will stand out. So I'm really excited to be coaching all of you. And I'm really happy that all of you all have turned up to learn and become young web developers and let us start with the history of HTML all right so HTML so HTML was founded by uh, Tim Berners-Lee in 1989 and Tim Berners-Lee was the first man to develop such code and uh, HTML is a coding language which is used to create websites so HTML stands for hypertext markup language it is the standard markup language for creating web pages so using HTML we will be able to create a basic web page then HTML describes the structure of a web page and it consists of all sorts of elements it consists of the header the footer the body and all sorts of content that you would generally see in a normal web page okay and to be really clear i want to show you the world's first web page this was created by tim berners lee in 1989 this is the first web page ever to be created in this world okay and uh, in this website uh, all that is there is first there's a title the world wide web and then here there's a heading over here world wide web and this is all the content when i say content i mean the body of the website now the body consists of all sorts of paragraphs and text and hyperlinks all these blue color underlined text are nothing but hyperlinks so when we click on them we go to another page okay and in short time even you will be able to create such pages which will link you to other pages all right so this is the very first website created by tim berners lee and before we get into the details i just want to tell you uh instead of we can use html or we can type it on notepad notepad plus plus and different size types of text editors but as far as i know the two best text editors I feel is Sublime Text. Okay, you can just go to Google and type Sublime Text or Atom. Sublime Text, there's a free version, and every time you need to use it, uh, uh, I don't really, I don't really use Sublime Text, but as far as I've seen reviews, Sublime Text is really nice. Then comes Atom. I use Atom currently, and Atom seems to be working perfectly. Only reason I I recommend y'all to use text editors is because when you'll use a basic notepad it uh, it does not display any tags or code in colors it just displays in plain black and white which is a disadvantage because uh, you will not be able to make out what is a tag what is code or any of that so now that we know about the history and the founder of HTML let's dive into our actual topic html okay so html no before this i would like to show you just one image okay this is what this is exactly what happens whenever we go and search in google supposing we go and we search for a website or supposing we are searching for google itself okay www.google.com 
and the IP address for Google is 172.217.7.23 what this does is it sends a request to the Google servers and the Google servers contains our website details basically our HTML file our CSS file and our JavaScript file so these three files will all be merged and sent one by one to as a response to our request for Google okay so first HTML comes then followed by the CSS then the JavaScript so like I said in our first image first HTML will come and followed by some details and designs by our CSS and our completely undestructible web page using our HTML CSS and JavaScript this is what happens whenever we request for a for any web page or website okay so now let's dive in directly into what our HTML code will look like hmm? this is our basic HTML web page okay and I will explain to you line by line of what each tag means and code in HTML like commands in HTML are basically represented by tags and to represent a tag all we have to do is open and close these triangular brackets okay angular brackets sorry so it starts with doc type HTML so what does doc type HTML do doc type HTML it's basically a declaration that defines that this document that it is a document of HTML5 document okay HTML5 is the latest version of HTML and all the latest features whatever all the latest code whichever has recently been introduced is pre present in HTML5 whereas if you see our first website created by Tim Berners-Lee that did not have HTML5 concepts and it was just a simple website no CSS nothing okay so so far I've told you what doc type HTML tag does and it basically defines that the our upcoming HTML file is a HTML5 file okay then HTML this is the root node or root tag for our entire HTML page it starts with a HTML tag and it ends with the HTML tag okay so if you do indentation it's much better okay uh, because it make your HTML file also look much pretty and you don't have to worry about uh, you won't have to get confused with the code so uh, HTML I've explained to you that this is our root tag then right after HTML comes the head and head this tag consists of all the metadata that are temporary or uh, that our HTML file is going to consist of that means metadata in the sense it's going to consist of basically the title and we will also have something called link okay and I will explain link as we go on link will be used to link to a CSS file or JavaScript file or even to a bootstrap kind of uh, website that we'll use link for so that is our uh, that is what our head does okay head consists of all the metadata and then we start with the body this is where everything that is entered inside the body of a HTML file will be displayed okay so now if we are going to run this I've stored it in basic.html and we run it this is what is going to be seen uh, all we can see is the title that is page title and in h1 whatever we saw in h1 um look at this title and our page title was there and h1 this is a heading this is a heading and p for paragraph this is a paragraph so this is a paragraph so this is the basic uh, structure or body of a html okay website and as you can see that is there's no difference in what the first website was created and what we created other than the links okay so there's this text in both those and then in that they have a link and here we've not yet introduced links so links will be I will explain to you in short notice but then right now uh, 
this is our basic HTML page. So, so far I have explained to you what a basic web, uh, web page look like and this is the basic structure of a HTML page. See it starts with a HTML tag that is the root tag and it ends with that same HTML tag. So starting as you can see I will explain to you starting always uh, supposing we want to clear everything except for top tags. Starting HTML okay this is how we start and to close it we use the forward slash HTML and note that all tags in HTML need not to be closed most of it majority of the tags need to be closed but there are some tags which are self-closing which we do not need to close like instance break and uh, image tags but then that we will come back in some time and now we got the head okay and to close head always close head most of these tags we need to be closed and then start with title title and now whatever we need the title of our uh, our website to be will come under this so title if you're going to give example website okay and then you close title and after closing title if you want a link we can link if not we can forget then uh, right after head comes the body body and inside the body comes whatever and inside the body comes whatever we need to display on our web page so so far this is our content and supposing we want to comment yeah, I don't know if you all know exactly what the use of comment lines are huh? but comment lines are basically used to type any gibberish and not gibberish actually we type gibberish comment lines are used to give an identity of what is going to come after supposing we are going to write a paragraph and right after that comes P P stands for paragraph so if you want a paragraph and then Lorium Ipsium and yeah and what we do is we close the P and this is the advantage of using sublime text or atom because once we type uh, anything once we we need not know all the tags but the second we type it it starts giving us suggestions of what our thing uh, what we might be trying to say like lorium hello and once we click on this or once we click enter it prints everything okay so that is why I suggest you all highly to use either sublime text or atom text editors which will make your HTML programming much easier so so far we have done this and you close the paragraph we have created a paragraph and you close the paragraph but these are opening and closing tags and supposing we want like you know I will show you an example of a self-closing tag but now this is all in one big sentence and here's a full stop so right after full stop we give a br tag okay br tag what it basically does is create a break okay and I will save this and I will show you not in this uh, yeah page two and once we refresh this is our content whatever we have changed uh, from the heading but you can see example website as we've given in the title and all the content that we've typed like we've given a break after a liqua which Supposing if you want to give another break after this BR We have created a break and if you want to give another break here BR and now if we save control s and If we control R refresh here, this is where 
all our content is gone and this is all basically because it's inside the paragraph tag and let me keep both the screens together so you can have a better understanding this is a paragraph tag and inside this came the paragraph and this is the comment line which was used to have a comment so moving forward i would like to show you what is a heading tag so there are basically six heading tags starting from h1 and all the way to h6 okay h1 and heading 1 or oh, shit h1 and see this is how it looks and i'm just gonna h2 and we have our h2 there h2 h3 h3 h4 h5 h6 so we will just copy paste and do some modification h2 heading 3 heading 4 heading 5 and heading 6 so h1 stands for heading 1 which would be the biggest heading that we could get so control s for save and when we refresh here look at this this is how it's going to look h1 has the biggest heading h2 has a heading a slightly smaller than h1 and so on and so forth um so far we have seen the basic structure of a html page and um what is a paragraph and headings now i want to teach you what are attributes so before that we have covered all this what is html what is the basic body of the basic html web page and how to write comments now html attributes are just like this um supposing uh we want to add an image in our body or uh, after a paragraph create a new paragraph and inside this paragraph let me enlarge the screen for this image so when we want to input an image first uh, there are two types the two ways in which we can input an image one is an absolute part and one is a, a relative part but here see here we have all these options or attributes for image we can have image alt we can have image height i is map and long desk but here we want image source and once we click on that image source and it gives us two quotes okay and right now in our folder we have two images one basic.jpg and one structure.jpg so we recently discussed structure of the html web page so uh, i will tell you i'll put that in structure.jpg and whenever we have an image it's always good to have an alt and what and what alt does is it gives an alternative text for the image because sometimes in few people's pcs or mobile phones it always does not open the image and instead of that we can have an alternate text for that so structure so basic structure we will write that and we will close the image tag an image tag is a self closing tag so we need not have anything i'll just close the p okay so control s for save and i will open it in the browser
so we have opened the browser and once we refresh we have a huge image it has not taken the size so this automatically chooses a size for itself but what we should do these are all called attributes see these are image is a tag this image here it's a tag and image is attribute is called source and alt okay source and alt are attributes of image but the value we can give a value to those attributes which give meaning okay so not only alt we can also give a width of um maybe 500 pixels pixels we write here as px and we can also give the height height of say 1000 pixels and save this and let's see what it does refresh and it does this okay but um, supposing if we wanted to all uh, naturally alter the height we just need to give width with 500 pixels save it go there and it will auto alter the height you need not specify but supposing we want this image to be small then we can give width as 200 pixels or oh, sorry my bad save it and let's see so our width is 200 pixels but our height is definitely more than 200 pixels most probably i think it's 300 or 350 pixels okay and this is just to show to you as soon as we change the value in whatever we text immediately it changes the value in our website and not just image and like you've seen in the first website that was visible we can also have a link so a and like we spoke href what href does href is the attribute that we place the link in okay to which website we want to land to now supposing a href and we go to google.com oh sorry it should be www google.com a tag is not a self-closing tag so a tag will go click here to go to google and we close a and what this does when we refresh it we scroll down a bit and look at this click here to go to google now what this does is it links us to google your file cannot be accessed it may have been moved or deleted oh my bad uh this is all because we have not gone online yet but we can one second i will show it and if you want to land here or uh, we have to give the whole thing https and like um sorry So what we should do is we should give the whole link so what i'm doing is i'm going to select all of this in the backspace and control c https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com and we save it and once we're done saving it now we can go here example website refresh this and this here click here to go to google and once we click on this we go to the google search okay so it's that simple these are nothing but attributes so so far we have seen the basic structure of the html website we've seen attributes we've seen what the attributes can do how powerful they are and now um, we will i've taught you headings also and we will we can see lists and i've already saved a folder containing lists okay just to make our coding more simple there are three kinds of lists one is the ul okay unordered list and ol ordered list and d 
TL that we'll come back to later descriptively but UL so we're just gonna copy paste this control C go to our basic web page and go and control V so what this does is let me close this here <coughs> what this basically does is this creates an unordered list so unordered list uh, let me show you what this does directly so it gives you much better understanding so here and we refresh zoom out and see this is what an unordered list does wait let me comment out all this and image is gone yes save and so what happens here is we have commented out those and this is what an unordered list looks like an unordered list and an ordered list ordered list will instead of having these bullets it will have numbers okay an ordered list will always be in uh, numerical order okay ascending uh, so here in unordered list all we have is bullets and using css we can change this from being a bullet to a square box or as per our desire but right now we are doing only html so this is going to be in bullets this is coffee tea and milk that's in unordered list and if you want an ol and unordered list starts with ul okay so uh, sorry unordered list This is an unordered list it starts with ul and it also has something uh, called li and what li is it is a list item okay and this is common for both as you can see here in our basic syntax li li okay that stands for both ordered list and unordered list. And now, if we go to see what an ordered list does, right? An ordered list basically it has everything the same as coffee, tea, milk, and the list item. Only thing it changes to oil okay and what this does like you can see here it gives an order to our list items like one two and three and an unordered list does not have an order and there's something also called as nested list nested list is basically a list inside a list and uh, like supposing um coffee and um, we're not just we're not satisfied with only coffee list item of this thing and we create an ordered list inside this okay ordered list and this ordered list will have a list item of coffee means brew brew coffee okay and close the list item brew and tea we'll, okay we should also close the ol close the ordered list then so brew and we also have i don't know I'll give me some name costa so what this does is we save this and we refresh this so there is an ordered list inside an unordered list so supposing we want to see coffee we have two types of coffee brew coffee and costa coffee and all sorts of stuff that is and that is nothing but nested list and we will now see descriptive list i just get to that
so coming back to descriptive list now uh, we just copy paste this control C and all below just control E okay so descriptive list is used to give a description about the any element okay so here coffee is DT and this DT is the descriptive item and the DD is the description about the item okay so what we are going to do is we are going to save it and refresh here oops I don't save here it is refresh here and see this is the DT descriptive item and what we want to describe we given DD description black hot ring white cold ring okay so we can change it according to our own will but this is what a descriptive list does so so far we have studied headings paragraphs images and now we have completed like lists okay and be sure to stick till the end of this course because we will keep giving you different different websites in which you need not learn all sorts of tags whereas you can just go and browse in those websites and you will get loads and loads of tags which will be useful in helping you design your website all right now after list uh, what i would like to teach you all is tables okay so i also have a folder ready for tables and that is here table that html hmm. and what is there in a table please don't worry about style and all that stuff that we will get into once we go to css hmm. so from here body and i will copy this part table all the way to here control c and let us give us before all of this so that it becomes much more easy for us to understand control v mm. and i will comment out these lines as well so that it does not get in our way okay and we're going to save so what this does is we've created a table but um we can make our table really really pretty only using css and i let me show you what we have done so that you don't so i have given an h1 table in html so that has come here table in html and then we started a new paragraph p then to start the table we have to use the table tag okay so table and then tr is the table row tr stands for table row and th stands for table heading that is here table row table heading and so the table row explains to us the first row what it consists of so our first row it consists of first name last name and age okay and what happens here is th is the table heading then so we close our first when we open a first row we close the first row okay so then we open the second row okay the second row consists of all the data so td table data first the first heading row is the only row that consists of th tag which is the table heading tag and all the other tags of the table rows coming after that will have td which is the table data tag so td has jill that is entered here jill and then it has smith okay last name jill smith and jill smith is a girl whose age is 50 and the next row we have eve jackson who's a girl 
we not mention gender but whose age is 94 okay so this is how you construct a table and I will give you a little cheat code about how to get the benefit out of HTML without remembering all these tags the best way is W3 schools okay W3 schools the link will be provided in the description so when you go to W3 schools it's not just HTML you can learn all sorts of languages in which you do not have to remember all the code so W3 schools consists of HTML CSS JavaScript SQL Python and so on and so forth so supposing we want only HTML right now we are focusing on HTML we go to HTML home and it has a brief description of everything okay then introduction basic and all that stuff and once supposing we go to lists we can find it or we could just type it out but see uh, paragraphs and we go and it explains all about paragraphs every detail we need to know about paragraphs like line breaks which is a self-closing tag and pre it gives us information about all and we need not remember all sorts of tags because tomorrow when you land in a company your boss is not going to see how much knowledge you have about the coding and how much you've implemented and all the only thing that matters is how fast you get the job done and if it's done before the deadline that is all that matters so WT schools is really really good so that you know you don't have to break your head on learning all sorts of tags and all that stuff like see we just learned about table Jill Eve Jackson and this is a basic table but if you want to add a border then using some CSS we can add a border and uh, we can do all sorts of stuff like supposing when you come here and we actually execute our full-on table program which consists of only table here we've used CSS and CSS when we use in a HTML file we use style tag which you will learn tomorrow of course but if we have to execute this I've saved it as table.html and once we execute this this is how it's gonna look much better compared to what our example website was doing no see our example website all it did was his first name last name age and all that but if we do for this look at this how nice it is it gives us a border and it also separates and it has nice spacing and stuff like that so uh, I want you all to use uh, W3 schools and use it to your advantage because it has a wide range of everything you can just supposing you want to change something in link you can just go to link and you can learn all sorts of links here HTML link the target attribute relative URLs and yeah I forgot to tell you all about absolute and relative path name okay so once we want to input an image to our code like which was here mm, what is that image here suppose we don't want to get this comment in a way so this is an image and what we have done here is since we have had our image structure.jpg we have just directly kept it here but in our case this is called so here we have used our relative path name okay which is structure.jpg but supposing we clear this and I teach you absolute path name is this we copy this so we take an image from Google and we copy the URL okay and we paste it here control V and we save this and now we go to our example web page and we refresh this we will find our absolute path name has gone and fetched our images how I got the image was from Google I just Google colors and I open this in a new tab the image and I copy pasted this same thing 
so the last topic i would like to talk about today is about forms okay html forms this is one of the most useful features one of the most not the most one of the most useful features and there's different types of things that we can do with google forms not google forms with html forms the different types so basically to use a html form we have to have an input type okay uh it starts with the code word form as you can see your form and we also have something called label label just gives us a name for a form so suppose let me explain in brief let me copy paste this into our code enlarge this and let's just go below and maybe after closing this paragraph and we paste this <coughs> so this form what it does oh, my bad what it does is it has a label and we are only entering the name first name and the last name and so we labeling the first name as f name and uh, let me explain to you as we directly go to the website and execute it example refresh this and see here this is what we've done using our form first name and last name and it's two let me just zoom in on this Save this, go here, refresh, and let me also comment out the list. and just to get an ex a proper understanding we will go here to our form and let's concentrate on our form so the form starts with the form tag and inside came the label so what this label does is it takes our f name and it uh, for for f name okay uh for f name we have referenced it with an id called f name and first name so this is our label we need not put this for f name and references but then it's better it uh makes it look more professional so for f name first name and we give a colon and we close the label and then right after that we have a break so the break breaks the line and takes your code to the next line and then for a form we always need an input the input is used we have different kinds of input we have radio buttons we have check boxes we have text so here we have used text so the input type type is an attribute of input and the value of that attribute is text so what kind of input we require here is a text to enter the first name and the id we have referenced it to this label called f name and the name also we have given as f name and we have done a break same goes to l name which stands for last name we have given a label for the last name and uh, the label name here is last name and then we have also taken an input called text so we can type in a text 
and here we can type in some this thing and last we have given a submit how do you give a submit as a, a button is input type is equal to submit value is equal to submit so there are so many attributes that you can give for input supposing we create our input input and we have all sorts of see look at these attributes that we have for input we have accept we have alt we have autocomplete we have autofocus we have checked we have dir name list max all these attributes stand for input okay so submit is just one of those that we can use to submit but here if we submit it just does not make any difference it just reloads the page submit if we have an a href if we put in it will link us to a new page so so far this is what a form does then the next attribute of form that we can use is a radio okay and just not to make it so complicated i have already typed it and kept this for time saving purpose and here let us save and refresh here so look at this i want to give some space between this so let's give two breaks okay save and refresh so we have breaks over here and what our break does it pushes the code to the next line so we've given two break spaces so there's two lines completely free only because we specified it <coughs> now the next attribute of input in the form section is a radio radio buttons are nothing but these buttons we can either select these actually we can select more than one but using css we can gather that but right now we want to input gender okay so form we have given this and we could have given a label actually so one second i just give a gender here instead of male we need not have this for we can just have as gender gender okay and once you save and refresh this <coughs> we get a gender so now first we put a label containing gender okay and then the next we have given an input okay first here in input first we have to give the input and then give the label okay so uh input and we have input type radio so radio causes these kind of buttons in which we can select and see one of the inputs so input radio and the id is male which we are referencing for the label and the name of the input is called gender the value is male and then the label we have given it as male so male female any of those we can select based on who we are so the same input went for female and the same input went for others this is one more form which we used to create radio buttons and last i am going to teach you about check boxes check boxes look pretty it's as good as a radio button but check boxes you can select multiple and save this and let us see what effect it has over here so i forgot to give breaks again sorry my bad break break hmm. so we can enough break and we can select multiple that's what check boxes are used for so here what we have done is we have started with the form let me indent this so started with the form and our type value is checkbox okay id is vehicle 1 vehicle 2 vehicle 3 and the name we have just given for our input is vehicle 1 the value is bike so and we have also labeled it with a for i have a bike and i have a car and i have a boat so based on whatever our so 
so based on whatever we have we can select multiple that is not an issue we can select or unselect also so that is the use of our checkbox and if you enlarge this page so so far we have seen three types of forms forms in which we input text here just some gibberish then some radio button and checkboxes so that's all code i'm going to teach for today okay we've covered the basic structure and attributes values links images okay um you can we can just keep on you can go to w3 schools and you can get a better understanding of all these if you just scroll down whenever you have the time you need not by heart everything please don't buy heart because you will i have been me being a developer web developer front end web developer the most important thing for us is time we can do multiple number of projects by saving that time so refer w3 schools okay supposing you don't know you don't know what to search for and supposing you want to search for something like a mark you we don't know what mark you does right m a r q u e in html and one of the first searches you know will be in w3 schools like you see here mark you tag what does the mark you tag do we can directly see here see mark you with all this if you want to do a live demo you can go here and look at this mark you is making this rotate from the descending order and we never knew this but we need not even by heart all sorts of stuff like this this is what basically mark you does shows an output and if you want from left to right right to left and this is just an example of what what all content w3 schools have because um, there's a lot that we can we need not learn but we can make advantage of and the last topic that i want to cover today is bootstrap bootstrap is such an amazing um website or platform whatever it's a platform in which helps us to do beautiful designs to our web page and we need not even know the code like supposing this is our code so far for today and all we have to do is import <clears throat> we can either download bootstrap or we can import the links which will link our HTML file to this bootstrap and use all sorts of things. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is all the bootstrap, okay? Code. You just go to bootstrap and you copy this code. Control C. Go to your text editor and you enlarge this so that you can see clearly. Go in head. Like I told, head is meant for metadata and to store all sorts of links and stuff so control v and we need not worry about the link or need not care okay because bootstrap is going to take care of everything all this does is it's going to link us to our bootstrap so what bootstrap does is here see we have lots of items <coughs> in bootstrap see here also it's given us a css and js js is for javascript it gives us uh, links okay in which we can use for our website and these bootstrap basically consists of all code that is pre done by other users okay it's done by users who have already implemented this code and made our life easy so all we have to do is copy paste that code and it will still look as good as uh it'll look as good as we have created it okay so let me just show you one second uh -huh. so in bootstrap 
uh, we can just go supposing we want a nav bar nav bar and we click on nav bar and this gives us some basic demo of what our nav bar should look like supposing we want this all we have to do is copy this code go to here and go to our uh, go to our code maybe put it in a paragraph yeah. <coughs> and paste that and we need not know the meaning to anything we can literally change it as and how we wish and we save this so what this does let's go back to our sample website example website and refresh this and we will have a nav bar look at this how cool is that we will have a nav bar and we don't even have to worry about how we got it because bootstrap did all the work for us instead of a nav bar if we need um buttons look at buttons for an instance these are different different sorts of buttons all we had to do was import copy paste the link to the CSS file and the jQuery file and paste in this navbar code and we got it so supposing we want a button and all these buttons look nice so supposing we want only the primary and secondary button uh, so it will be blue and grey we can just copy control C and just to have the body start we paste it control S we go to our example website and refresh we will have two buttons right above our nav bar okay and what this does is because we have placed this above our nav bar it comes above our nav bar if we place this below our nav bar then no tension so let me show you this is right below our nav bar hmm? control e save this and refresh earlier it was here now it comes right below our nav bar and buttons we can change it with with a uh, href or even give some value to the button if we click it it will link us to some different different pages so the the features are unlimited we have lot supposing we want drop down we can just go to drop down click over there and look at different different kind of example see drop down button once you click on an action another action something else here now all we have to do is copy and paste it directly into our atom editor or supposing it'll be really nice to add some images images so once you give images look at this responsive images and what this does is see we need not by heart such code so what bootstrap does is it makes our coding experience much more easier a less tiring no headache and just easy to use so i recommend i highly recommend using bootstrap it gets your job done easy